Okay, good evening. Um, I'm now in Fukuoka. Um, I travelled here about, I guess it was 12 o'clock today, uh, via the Shinkansen. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I I woke up about 7 o'clock, had a shower at my former hostel, which was uh, the International Hostel in Nagasaki. Uh, I, I got out, had some breakfast, and um, I was trying to sort out the GPS thing that I told you about, that I said about in one of my first videos, um, but it's a bit of a struggle to get get, um, get sorted. So I'm still working on that, but uh, nothing as of yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. I think I'm going to have something uh, within the next couple of days, but I'll see how it goes. Um, I was sorting stuff out on the computer, uh, getting nowhere. I also needed to arrange accommodation here in Fukuoka. I needed to find out about the trains and what train I needed and what time they were, they were available. Um, and then some fellow travellers came in and um, they were at the end of their travels. They were finishing up in Nagasaki and they had been through where I'm going, where I'm headed. And so they gave me loads of tips on what to do. They gave me a website to find my um, uh, my, my train ticket at. Uh, they gave me a website for accommodation. They told me where I can stay in several cities. So that sorted that out. I mean, good places that are that are quite cheap, which is a, a priority for me. And anyway, um, so I was looking around for tickets, and all I could find was um, uh, at least for free on my route pass. Um, all I could find was uh, two trains, so um, a transfer um, from Nagasaki to Fukuoka. And uh, then another Japanese girl came in, fellow traveller, she came, she's come down from, uh, I think it's just below Hokkaido, just south of Hokkaido, um, and she she helped me out for about, she gave me about an hour of her time actually, which was crazy, and which is something that uh, I find quite funny. Um, I think Japan is the only place where you'd find that, where a stranger will, will give you an hour of their time. And she's on holiday as well, she's travelling around, she's having her own fun, and she gave me an hour of her time. She had her own plans and she delayed her plans, she postponed her plans. And I thought that's that's really um, kind of sums up the, the Japanese mentality, in a way. Um, um, sense of helping, a want to help, not just um, a sense of duty. But anyway, she ended up finding me um, uh, a train journey that was free on my pass, which is most trains, but uh, there's some that I would have to pay for. But anyway, she found me a direct route from Nagasaki to Fukuoka, um, and it, which was a godsend, really. Um, it was a train that was leaving every, or, you know, journeying every, every one hour, so it wasn't uh, one a day. But um, So she sorted that out for me. And um, it all went very smoothly. That is, until I got to the train. Um, train was on time, as usual. I've actually written a post about this. But as I was walking down beside the train, by the doors, um, there are those um, LCD um, messages that scroll along. And um, the first um, section of the train, the first coach, uh, said, you know, first class, uh, non-smoking, reserved. And when I went down, it was non-smoking, first class, non-reserved. And I was going down, 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 until I could find the economy area, basically, um, the cheap ass area. So um, it was, I think it was coach eight or something, because I had to walk a fair way. And I, I got in, and again, I was struck with the feeling that I, I, I wasn't meant to be in that section of the train. Reason? Uh, well, there were leather, leather seats, for one thing, and the floor was wooden as well. And it wasn't that cheap wood, wooden floor. It was it was really high quality. Everything about the Shinkansen, is the bullet train, is high quality. And it's it, it was a very comfortable journey. You can... Um, put your seats back and it's it's just a really comfortable journey the, the journey is smooth um, it's obviously fast that's what the Shinkansen's about and uh, I, I took some some fairly good pictures as I was going through um, and so I jumped off the train um, and I had to find this place 
uh, where I am now, which is uh, Kaosan International Hostel of Fukuoka, which is a nice place. It's well located and it's it's cheap, um, which ticks all the boxes for me. And uh, I didn't find it too difficult to find it really. I mean, there's a nice little map on the back there of the leaflet. I don't know if you can really see it, but anyway. Um, so I found it quite uh, pain-free, really. Um, and I got here, and I met met up with some people, some fellow travellers, and everyone's pretty friendly here. Um, I committed another faux pas. As soon as I came in, I, I didn't actually take my shoes off. Um, I just walked in with my um, horrible, uh, rotty shoes, um, and I was told to take them off. Um, for which I obviously apologised and said, "Yeah, won't do it again," sort of thing. But uh, it's it's difficult getting the habit of that. Taking your shoes off at the front, I often walk into my house without taking my shoes off. So let alone a um, a motel or a hostel. So um, and then I, I sat down and I tried to sort out some stuff on my computer again, update my blog a little bit. Um, I went out and um, bought some water. I needed some water, had a little walk around the local Fukuoka area, took some pictures, we'll upload them later, and uh, got back, um, got talking with some people again, and then just tonight uh, met up with a guy uh, named Scott, cool guy, uh, and we um, hit the bars in Fukuoka, um, and ended up getting having a beer in a, in a coffee shop, which is quite funny really, but... Um, and that was uh, it was a Seattle coffee shop or something like that. And uh, actually, one funny story: opposite this Seattle coffee shop, um, there was a Starbucks. Now, I, I needed the toilet when we went into the Seattle bar, uh, and they didn't have one in there. And so I went over to Starbucks. I knew they'd have one, so I went over there, and I, I went in um, to look for the toilet. Obviously, I was over in the far corner, and sure as I might I went over and I tried to open the door and it wouldn't open so I thought okay well I, I've uh, had experiences where you you know I've gone to some McDonald's and uh, often they lock their door so I thought okay they've just locked their door they want customers to be paying and customers have to go to members of staff and ask if the door can be unlocked so um, rude people don't come in off the public um, or off the street and just use the toilet and walk straight back out which was basically my agenda so I, I kind of understood that, and I, I went back um, to the where the checkout is, and I asked in broken Japanese if I could use the toilet, and they just laughed. They just burst out laughing and looked at each other and laughed, and I <laughs> I didn't really understand what they were laughing at. I thought maybe I didn't explain it properly. I thought I, maybe I said something silly, and so I just tried to kind of gesture that I needed the toilet, and. Um, the guy behind the checkout just pointed again and said, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So I went back and I tried again, pushed the door, nothing. And I'm, I'm a bit confused now, I'm a bit annoyed. I'm thinking, okay, so what's the game here? What's what's happening? Have they completely, is it completely been lost in translation? Do they not understand what I want here? And I pushed the door again, and then for some reason I pushed it to the side. And lo and behold, it opens. It was a sliding door. Um, so that's obviously what they were laughing at. And um, it's quite common for doors to be uh, sliding doors in Japan. In Japan. Um, and it's it's good, really, because obviously with the opening doors forward and back, it, it can take up space and it could be inconvenient. So, um, but yeah, in the end, I, I got into the toilet uh, and I, I walked back out and I felt then obliged to buy something. I, I couldn't walk out um, after I'd asked them if I could use the toilet. So I just bought a couple of cookies for 200 yen each. Um, went opposite into the Seattle uh, coffee bar and met up with uh, Scott again and he said he watched the whole thing. He was sitting at one of those bar stalls looking out of the window and he could see everything in like, you know, a panoramic shot uh, what was going on in Starbucks opposite because that was just like all, all the facade, all the front, it's glass. And he said he, he just uh, broke out laughing. Uh, and he could, even though he obviously couldn't hear what was going on in there, he could kind of sense what I was saying, because so I was gesturing and everything. So that, that was quite fun. He would laugh about that. And, uh, and yeah, now, now we come back, 
Um, he's gone back to his room and I'm, I'm just here, lying on the bed, and I thought I'd update you guys. Um, what else, what else? I think tomorrow, um, I haven't really seen Fukuoka, but I've been thinking, because I want to go to Dezaifu, uh, which is a town kind of near here. Um, I think I'm going to have to take a bus for that, so I'm thinking I'll get up really early tomorrow, go to Dezaifu, um, get the momentum going, and then come back and have a good look around Fukuoka, and then head off in the evening on on the train, um, so I can get to Hiroshima. Um, so that's kind of my rough plan at the moment. We'll see how it goes, but um, I'll keep you updated. Okay.